In part two, we had just completed the boundary surface that creates the main bottle and then used a trim to cut out the round circle. The next step is to actually create a sketch of nothing more than a diagonal line that's going to split this body into two, sur two faces but still the same surface body. This split line goes from this corner of the logo area to this corner. And the reason we're splitting this body is so that later on when we add a fill surface to represent the logo area, we'll have an edge that will begin here and wrap around and end here, which will be convenient for a fill and later on will also be convenient when we add our boundary step that will fill in this zone here. The same sketched line which creates the split can also be used to control an angled plane which will be important for creating the fill surface in this area. The fill surface is created by copying and trimming back this arc from the middle layout. That will represent the bulge in the logo surface. Drawn on the angled plane is this curve which connects to this point this point and has a pierce to this arc here. These are then put together to form a fill where the boundary of the fill will be this edge and this sketch and in this sketch here will be constraint curve which is what we see here. The next step is to extend this surface because we know that the logo surface actually arcs out to this area. So I will just make sure that this extends far enough to get past this arc in my layout sketch. And I don't have to worry about the fact that this edge hangs out in space because all this excess will be trimmed away. Before doing my trim, I'm actually going to offset this surface inward by two millimeters. And it's actually this offset surface that's going to be my true logo surface. So this original surface I intentionally made so that I could attach it to this perimeter edge and then when I do my offset, I know that I have a consistent offset with respect to the perimeter all the way from the top to the bottom. So now I can delete the temporary surface, leaving me with the offset surface, which will be the actual logo surface. And copying the appropriate sketches from my layouts, I can now trim back this arc and using an offset of about four or five millimeters, I can trim back this arc as well to create an intentional gap between the main body and the logo surface. That gap will be filled with a boundary surface, which will bridge from this edge to this edge, which again, it's convenient that we made a split here because we know this edge will end right at this point. And when we make the boundary surface, we go equal curvature to this surface, but we'll leave a contact constraint to this edge. Later on, this will be filleted when we construct this area here. Before I go any further, I knit everything together into a single body. Then I create a control sketch that is going to control, that's going to be used to divide the handle area into four quadrants. One, two, three, four. And these angled lines will control where the quadrants end and begin and also will control planes that I can draw handle cross sections upon. Part 4 of this video we will go ahead and construct the actual handle surfaces.